Alrighty guys, hello and welcome to my February 2023 reading wrap up. It's actually currently the 12th of February, so we're halfway through the month and I've only just got around to starting to film this. Dane reads. But anyway, I went to Iceland at the start of the month and I took these two books with me and you can kind of tell because they got water damaged because everything was wet. Um, but I read The Girl Who Takes an Eye for an Eye by David Lagerkrantz and The Girl Who Lived Twice by David Lagerkrantz. These both continue the Stieg Larsson uh, Millennium series. So this is book five and book six or book two and three in Lagerkrantz's new trilogy. The Girl Who Takes an Eye for an Eye, I actually really enjoyed. Um, this one, it's got a lot about twins in it and like Dr. Joseph Mengele's twin experiments. Basically this like shady organization is separating twins and sending them off to be adopted but giving them to polar opposites so they'll give one to a really rich parents and one to a really poor parents. Like one to really nice parents and one to really mean parents and all of that stuff. With the goal of kind of understanding what role nature and nurture play. Um, it's an admirable goal but the ends don't justify the means and it all kind of comes back to bite them on the bum when some of these twins find out what went on. And at the heart of all of this, you've obviously got Elizabeth Salander, the girl with the dragon tattoo knocking about and um, uh, Michael Blomquist as well. He's kind of ends up investigating the story. I gave this one a strong four out of five. It's probably the best crime novel I've read so far this year, although I haven't read that many of them to be fair. And then we have The Girl Who Lived Twice. This one for me was a weak 3.5 out of 5. The problem with this was that it mostly focused on Salander, and I don't find her to be a very interesting character. I mean, I understand the choices behind her, I just find her too unlikable to give a shit about her, really. Um, yeah, because I, I get the feeling you're supposed to like her even though she's unlikable, but I don't like her and she's just unlikable and so it's kind of like the narrative's like working against itself because it's trying to be like oh you should feel so worried for Salander and I'm like I hope she dies and then she doesn't die and I'm like uh. um but yeah this focus mostly focused on her coming to terms with her past and stuff that one was a much more of a slog for me um like with this one the girl who uh took an eye for an eye takes an eye for an eye I like struggled to put it down and was really getting into it with the girl who lived twice I was reading like 20 pages at a time just to kind of slowly get through it Alrighty, then I read uh, Second Wind by Jimmy White, which is his autobiography. Jimmy White is a snooker player. This is basically all about cocaine and booze because he had a problem with both of them. He has since cleaned up. Um, but yeah, as someone who is a former drinker and whatnot, and now I don't drink, I'm pretty much straight edge apart from coffee um, and nicotine, I guess, through vapes. It was a bit, I don't know, samey just reading about him getting pissed all the time. But there were some good stories there and some good reminiscences of uh, old school snooker players. I gave it like a, probably like a 3 or a th maybe a low 3.5 out of 5. Um, then I read two children's books. So I read Anna and Frogger Out and About and Anna and Frogger I Don't Know What Do You Want To Do. Actually it turns out that I'd already read both of these as part of Completely Boo Boo which is a, bi a bind up. Basically they're by an author called Anouk Ricard. She's a French author and, an, and she's one of the many authors who I'm slowly but surely trying to read everything that she ever wrote. Both of them were good, 4 out of 5. Speaking of good and 4 out of 5, Meridian by Alice Walker. So um, this you can tell that Alice Walker is a poet just from the way that she writes in this. It's very beautifully written but it also covers some really important subjects. It's set in the 1960s and covers like the civil rights movement and race and class and poverty in America. Um, it was just very eye-opening but very beautiful as well. And also I said in my written review I think I've never read a book that's in, that sort of transported me to a time and place as effectively as this did to the 1960s in the US. Full review coming soon. And then I read uh, Caligula and Other Plays by Albert Camus. So this has got Caligula, let me check what it's got. It's got Caligula, Cross Purpose, The Just and The Possessed in it. Um, all very good. Probably Caligula, Caligula was probably my favourite, but just because I find him really fascinating as a, a historical person. And then it was cool to see Camus with his kind of um, uh, existentialist and uh, what do you call it? absurdist uh, take on the play. Um, the Possessed as well was based on a Dostoevsky novel, so that was kind of cool. I had a really good introduction to this as well. Overall, a 4 out of 5. Did enjoy. Review coming soon. I read Pictures Metamorphoses by Herman Hesse, so this is short stories by Herman Hesse. To be honest, he's kind of an ideas man, so his short stories worked out really well, although what's interesting here is that they're kind of based on like folk tales and fairy tales, which isn't normally my thing, but Hess did it really well. Um, there were still quite a few where I was like, what the hell did I just read? But overall, I did still enjoy it, and I got probably got more out of it than I get from his novels normally, like a 3.5 out of 5. 
I then read The How Not To Die Cookbook by Michael Greger, MD. So, uh, Michael Greger, MD is a healthcare professional, doctor and nutritionist. Um, and he's written a book called How Not To Die, which is basically about how a vegan plant-based diet is the best diet for you. This is a cookbook based on that. It includes a bunch of like plant-based recipes that are super healthy, but also a lot of them are very delicious as well. So I was quite happy with that. 3.5 out of 5. Kept a few of those for my overall recipe list. Um, then I read Two Besides a Pair of Talking Heads by Alan Bennett. So this was a 4.5 out of 5 for me. Um, Alan Bennett's Talking Heads is like one of his most famous creations. And basically during the uh, first COVID-19 lockdowns, the BBC wanted to create some new original programming and Talking Heads was a natural fit for that because it's literally just people talking to camera. So they refilmed a bunch of the old ones and then this has two new ones that were created. Um, and this includes uh, the scripts of those and then also a really fascinating introduction by Nicholas Hitner. Overall, I gave it, as I say, a 4.5 out of 5. Really fascinating to learn how they created these new episodes because obviously they had to do it all while maintaining social distancing and stuff. And then I read True at First Light, his final novel by Her Ernest Hemingway. It's a Hemingway novel, uh, lion hunting in Africa and shit. It's like a, probably a 3 out of 5 for me, definitely not Hemingway's best. There were some really beautifully written parts, but I, I just wasn't gripped by it at all throughout, so I just kind of read it for completion's sake, but I have at least read it, and that's where I'm at, at the moment. So, I read uh, The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. So this is the sequel to The Handmaid's Tale. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. It has a hair in it. As you can see from the tabs, I'm planning on doing a review of it soon. Can't get the hair out. It was really brilliantly uh, written and does what the uh, original Handmaid's Tale does in that everything in it has a basis in our re real history. Um, lots of great stuff about women's rights in there. I think it's more important than ever to read books like these. And I think the release of this during the Trump presidency um, was a bit of a masterstroke in many ways. I also thought it could work as a standalone uh, if you haven't read The Handmaid's Tale, although I would recommend reading that first anyway, um, but they do kind of both have their own isolated little stories. I then read One Summer American 1927 by Bill Bryson. This is another one that I'm going to be doing a full review of, and um, this is literally what it sounds like. It's a non-fiction book about that particular summer in American history. Uh, it's a very interesting summer, so we have, um, what's his name, Charles Lindbergh's flight in the spirit of St. Louis. Um, where he flew from New York to Paris and was the first person to cross what I want to say is the Atlantic Ocean. Possibly, probably, I think. And, um, yeah. There's also, like, Babe Ruth and uh, Lou Gehrig going head-to-head -head for the record of most home runs in a season. Uh, we have the execution of Sacco and Vanzetti. We have some stuff with the presidency and whatnot. Uh, really, in oh, and it's in the middle of Prohibition as well. So, as you can see, I'm just removing these sticky tabs from it. So, all in all, fascinating read. Even though some of the uh, kind of subject matters interested me more than others, still enjoyed it overall. Strong four out of five. And then I read uh, The Secret Life of Bletchley Park by Sinclair Mackay. And this is non-fiction about Bletchley Park, which was the British code-breaking hub. It's where Alan Turing worked, the father of modern-day computing. It's where the Enigma code was cracked so that uh, the Allies could read German messages during the Second World War. Just a really fascinating little non-fiction like, insight into what it was like to live and work there at the time. I have visited Bletchley Park as well, which kind of helped because I could picture a lot of the settings. Overall, strong four out of five. And review of this coming soon as well. So there we have it, those are all of the books that I read in February 2023, I just dropped that pile of books on my cat and he has legged it. Uh, as always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video, thanks a lot, bye bye.